good morning. I'm glad good to morning. see you guys here this morning. Yeah, there you go. Good morning. And uh, let's uh, just be grateful that we have this opportunity to gather today. It's a beautiful day outside. I'm grateful for that. Grateful for those that are tuning in, whether it's Facebook Live or YouTube Live later this evening. Uh, we're just going to start with a simple word of prayer. Got a few uh, prayer concerns, announcements to let us be aware of, and then uh, we'll just go into God's word. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, and, and praise you for your grace, your mercy, your love. Grateful, Lord, that we can gather today and that, Lord, we have the freedom to do so. Lord, we recognize that there are places in the world right now that are very dangerous. And for them to gather and pray, Lord, it's really to, to take their lives into their own hands. And Lord, we think especially of a place like Ukraine where it's a being ravaged by war at this time. And so, Lord, we're going to have a special time of prayer uh, for people in Ukraine and for that whole situation. But, Lord, right now we just uh, want to open our hearts to you and to your word. We thank you, Father. We love you. We pray all this in Jesus' precious name. And God's people sit. Amen. 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 So, just wanted to let you know of a few things that are coming up, uh, just to make you be aware of. Uh, Annie Armstrong begins this uh, Sunday. Uh, week of prayer for Annie Armstrong. Uh, so Annie Armstrong is our missions offering for North American missions. Uh, and I was just telling the table over here, I want to show a, a picture. Maybe I didn't have it for you today, but maybe I'll have it for you Sunday. It's of a Southern Baptist chaplain at West Point, which is the military academy, uh, baptizing two individuals who profess faith in Christ. And they didn't want to do it in a like a private little ceremony. And they didn't want to wait for the water in the Hudson River to warm up, so they were baptized just a few weeks ago with ice floating by. I'm saying that there's dedication right there. Go, go get baptized in an icy river, but uh, we rejoice in that. But that's what our mission dollars go to support is missionaries here in, in North America. Also, this Sunday, uh, we're going to have uh, our missionaries that we support uh, locally, uh, Polly and Letty. Uh, they are missionaries to Cuba. He's from Cuba. She's from here. Uh, but they've been ministering and they've been doing some amazing things. And so they're just going to, they're stateside for a period of time. They wanted to come and join with us and worship this Sunday. And so come and hear what they've got to say. And so we uh, want to continue to support them. Also coming up uh, in the month of April is our Easter egg hunt. Uh, for that, we do need candy. We do, do need plastic eggs. So I encourage you to begin collecting those and bringing those. Uh, we'll have a time if you want to volunteer on that day. Uh, we just need people to kind of be uh, there to kind of corral the kids so they don't run out to the street and stuff like that. Uh, it's not real strenuous because they're, they're not worried about running in the street. They're worried more about finding eggs. So you just point them in the right direction, point them to an egg or something like that. But uh, we're looking forward to doing that. Also, Easter Sunday, don't forget that's always a great time to invite people to come. People are open to an invitation. In fact, most people who end up coming to church do so because someone invited them. Someone they know invited, whether it's a coworker, friend, neighbor, what have you. So be in prayer who you're going to invite uh, for Easter Sunday, which is April 17th. And then also around that time, actually Good Friday, we'll be doing our free Bible giveaway again. Uh, so we'll be sending out a sign up for that. If you want to sign up to help with giving away free Bibles, it's simply give away a Bible. How can we pray for you? And we did. We prayed for a lot of people last year when they uh, wanted to receive that Bible. And that was just a, a real blessing uh, for, to them, but also for us to participate in that. And then one more thing before we talk about praying for uh, Ukraine. Uh, Brother uh, Earl Pradat uh, passed away. You may have received that message uh, yesterday. Uh, he did pass away. And so there's a viewing today at Graham Funeral Home uh, from 9 to 4 uh, p.m. Uh, there's not going to be a service up here, but the service will be in North Carolina. So just be in prayer for Earl's family. That service will be a private service in North Carolina on Friday. Uh, and then finally, you know, pray for Ukraine. Uh, we're we're going to do that later as we kind of conclude our time together, but uh, just continue to be in prayer for what's taking place. And that kind of leads to what we'll be talking about this morning. We're going to be in Psalm 2. Uh, Psalm 2 is one that... Uh, we see quoted in the New Testament in Acts chapter 4, but we're going to read Psalm 2 and see uh, how we should approach uh, this time of what we're seeing take place. And you guys are watching the news. I'm watching the news. 
and we're hearing things that we're just like, whoa, I thought we'd gotten past that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, we're, we're thinking, you know, images of World War II were coming back up. A, a nation invading another nation, an unprovoked act of evil by Putin and the, the Russian troops. And I think I want to make a distinction. I think a lot of people are making a distinction. This is Putin doing this. I think the Russian people uh, are not in favor of that. And you're beginning to see some people protest, which they're, they're risking their life to protest that in, in Moscow and other places. And we need to pray for them. And we'd also, we need to pray for the, the Russian troops. I think many of them are thinking, this isn't what I signed up for. You, you wonder, but still, it, it's a great evil that's being done. And so uh, we need to think about what's taking place here. I mean, this invasion that's uh, taking place, uh, Putin saying he's going to raise the nuclear threat level, and, and, and the, the words of escalation keep going. And so it's kind of like there's a sense of where's this going to stop? You know, okay, you do this, I'm going to do that. You do that, I'm going to do this. That's how things can begin to snowball. But we need to recognize that God is in control. And that the nations may plot. The nations may do what they want, but who is ultimately the one in charge and we can trust him? Not that things can't get bad, and they can. Again, mention World War II, look at that. That was some great evil being done. But eventually, you know, truth and righteousness prevailed. We know that in the gospel, truth and righteousness will always prevail. But in Psalm 2, we look, we read here, it says, Why do the nations rage and people plot a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, Let us break their bonds in pieces and cast away their cords from us. So basically, this is like a challenge to God. Why are we going to let God rule over us? You know, we're, we're going to plot our own way. We're going to plot our own things. We're not going to listen to what God has to say. And so they, the people plot what a vain thing, an, an empty thing. And we think about all the rulers and crazy people in the past who have done some horrific evil and thought that they could control the world, thought that they could do what they just wanted but in the end they pay a price and in the end they will all stand before God and give an account of their life they may get away with a lot of things in this world and you know think about a lot of criminals on that level you know who get away with stuff put it in quotes they may get away with it here but ultimately they do not ultimately they will pay that price and so there's the thing we see of people plotting vain things and who knows why Putin is doing what he's doing? People can speculate. And people have uh, wondered, you know, has something gone wrong in his mind and his way of thinking? Well, obviously, if you're willing to kill people, something is wrong in your way of thinking. Amen. Something is wrong uh, in there. There's no moral compass uh, that you possess. Uh, and so it is wickedness that is done. But just think through the history of the world. How many people have plotted vain things thinking that they can set themselves up to just rule, but ultimately they will give an account. Ultimately, they will have to answer to the Lord. In verse four, he says, he who sits in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall hold them in derision. Then he shall speak to them in his wrath and distress them in his deep displeasure. Yet I have set my king on my holy hill of Zion. See, this is, it's like a, what, what you call an anthropomorphism. You know, it's kind of ascribing to God something that we can relate to. It's kind of like here is the, the kings of the earth. They're plotting their things. They think they're in control. And God is just like, y'all just don't get it. You, know, you, you don't remember who is in control. You, you're not surrendering to the fact that you are going to give an account one day. You think you are totally unaccountable. And so the Lord holds them what? In derision. And in his what? Deep this pleasure. What's taking place in the Ukraine, this invasion that's taking place, I think we can say with some certainty that that is displeasing to the Lord. It is displeasing. You know, the only person who really likes war is Satan. Satan thrives on war. Satan wants to see war. Why? Because one, more people die in war and 
Many of those people do not know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. So what? Well, people end up in a place called hell. Satan thrives on that. But it is a deep displeasure to, to the Lord. You see, God has set up His King. There is one King that everyone will be accountable to one day. Because what? Every knee you shall bow. Every tongue could bow. And who is that King? It's King Jesus, right? King Jesus. And yes, He set Him up as King. Uh, and he has ascended to the Father, but one day, what? He is coming back. And are these events that are taking place a precursor to that? I mean, hey, it, it certainly looks like what the Scripture is saying, wars and rumors of war, you know, one from the north who's going to come, you know, I mean, there are things that are at play here. And I'm not going to go out and say, oh, this is definitely what's going to happen, because I don't know what's going to happen in that sense. But the one thing I know for certain that will happen is Jesus is coming back. Amen. And he's going to set it all right. And he's going to take care of it. But in the meantime, we've got to trust. In the meantime, we've got to rely upon him. But understand that what man may plan and may do, the Lord sees it, and it's almost kind of like he laughs at it. Like, you, you just guys don't understand. It, it, it's about serving the one that I have appointed. It's about serving the one that I have set as my king on my holy hill. And so he says in verse 7, he says, I will declare the decree the Lord has set to me. You are my son. Today I have begotten you. Ask of me and I will give you the nations for your inheritance and the ends of the earth for your possession. You shall break them with a rod of iron. And you shall dash, dash them to pieces like a potter's vessel. Who is this son that the psalmist is speaking of? It's, it's Jesus. This is my beloved son, right? This is my son, right? Today I've begotten you. Who is the one who was appointed as the Messiah? The Messiah. It's Christ. And he is the one that everyone will give an account to. And he has given to this anointed one, to the Messiah, what all the nations. Remember in the temptation, Satan wants to offer to Jesus, hey, serve me and I'll give you all these nations. And the implication is that Satan has influence in all the nations of the earth. Why? Because we're part of this world system, right? And so he, he could in that sense. But Jesus says, I'm not going to circumvent God's plan in, the, in this sense. I don't want to take the shortcut. Because what Satan is saying is, I'll give you all the nations of the earth. You don't have to go to the cross for mankind. You don't have to pay for the penalty of sin, right? You just, just worship me and I'll make it easy for you. I mean, that's how Satan sells it. <laughs> but there's a price to pay for that. And so no. Uh, all the nations of the earth belong to the Lord. Amen. Why? Because He, one, is the Creator. And also, He is the Savior. He's the one who Jesus died on the cross. He died for everyone, for the sins of the world. And this is the inheritance that He has. The nations for you, for your inheritance, and the ends of the earth for your possession. Remember in Acts chapter 1, Jesus said, You will be my witnesses where? In Jerusalem, Judea. Samaria, where ends of the earth. Hey, it's right there. Psalm chapter 2. It's, it's what God's plan has been all along for his Messiah to go forward. So the nations may plot their vain things and may they do what they want, but the Lord sees and it, he understands and it's displeasing in his sight. But his answer is what? To send Jesus to appoint him. And we're again, we're here in Old Testament, Psalm 2. It's, it's laying this foundation for us to, to see and to know. And we're to do what? We're to trust Him. Verse 10. Now therefore be wise, O kings. Be instructed, you judges of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the Son, lest He be angry, and you perish in the way, when His wrath is kindled but a little. Blessed are all those who put their trust in Him. And he kind of sums it up right there at the end. What? Blessed are those who put their trust in Him. So if you don't put your trust in him, what does that mean? You're not blessed. That means you're under his punishment. You're under his wrath. You're under his judgment. But in Christ, this appointed one, we have hope and victory that is in him. So he's saying, verse 10, Therefore be wise, O kings. The rulers of the world need to acknowledge that there is a God in heaven. And 
they get to serve only at his pleasure, at God's pleasure. He is allowed for that. And so Putin has been allowed to be in power. God has allowed it. We don't understand that fully and completely. But he must understand that he is accountable to God. And so when we have a time of prayer, let's pray for Putin to repent. To repent of his evil. That maybe some scripture that was placed in him when he was a kid, that God will call that to remembrance and he'll stop what he's doing, this wickedness. And for the Russian soldiers, the same thing. And people in Russia who have had some uh, amount of scripture, I'm not going to say they're saved, but they, they've had some influence of scripture. God will call that to their remembrance that they'll recognize we need Jesus. We need the Lord. And, and let God use this as a time of calling people to great revival and great prayer. And here in the United States of America, we need to call out to God. It's, it's kind of easy in some sense. Okay, we're just watching this. And yeah, we're encouraged by what we see. Yay, that's great. But you know, we're just going to go about our everyday lives. You know, we're going to go about things as, as normal. But we need to recognize that this is more than just a physical battle that's taking place over there. there there's a battle in the heavenly places. There, this is a spiritual battle. It can only be won in prayer. Yes, it manifests itself in physical ways, bombs, and different things. But ultimately, it is a spiritual battle. And we need to pray. And I came across this. I uh, read this guy's website. It's called the Denison Forum. If you've ever seen his information, Denison Forum, I uh, usually find him when I go to ChristianHeadlines.com. Uh, he just kind of comments on the news and different things. And he does it from a Christian perspective. But he talked about uh, seven calls to prayer that changed the world. Say that again. Seven calls to prayer that changed the world. He's referring back to England in World War II. If you know your history, you know that for a while England stood by itself in this battle. You know, they, they the United States was kind of neutral on their own, and here's a, a madman who's marching across Europe. The first time of prayer uh, was on March 27th. 1940, the, the King King George VI called for a day of prayer because what, 350,000 British soldiers were stuck, were trapped at Dunkirk. You ever watch the movie Dunkirk? Pretty accurate. It's pretty amazing. And it's called the Miracle of Dunkirk that they got 330,000 of those troops out. If, if Hitler's army had wiped out the British at Dunkirk, World War II would have looked a whole lot different. England wouldn't have been able to do what it did, but they had a call to prayer, and the people prayed, and they evacuated all these soldiers. If you watch the movie, you find out people on their own little private boats went over, grabbing people, and this, it's really, and the Germans stopped for some reason. Why did they stop? They, you know, I mean, it's just, why? Because God's people were praying. But also, in the World War II, uh, the second and third national days of prayer came dur during what's called the Battle of Britain. And the Nazis were just bombing them. Every night, they just bombed. Just bombed the people. And I, I was reading a book about this not too long ago. And it was amazing how the British people, they would be bombed during the night. They'd come out during the day, clean up, go to work. Kind of go about their business the best that they could, right? At night, get down into the bomb shelters or the subways. It would bomb again, and, and they just kept on going. I mean, actually, Winston Churchill was a leader who encouraged them through that, uh, much like President Zelensky in Ukraine right now. He, everybody thought he would turn and run, but he said, "No, I don't. I don't need a ride. I need ammunition." Yeah. Right? I mean, that, that kind of thing. People resonate with that. But we need to recognize that it, it boils down to prayer. So the second and third national days of prayer were during the Battle of Britain. And the chief air marshal, he said this to say, he says, I will say with absolute conviction that I can trace the intervention of God. Humanly speaking, victory was impossible. Uh, they recognized that as much as what they were able to do, they could not have done it without the Lord. The fourth day of national prayer, the fourth national day of prayer, was on March 23rd, 1941, as Hitler was planning to invade Britain. They prayed, and there was a, some natural uh, 
catastrophes that took place. There was an earthquake. There was a, a, a gale that took place that blew Hitler's Navy 80 miles off course. Just happened, right? Just, just, just happened like that. No, and, and at that same time, there was a, a Yugoslavian began their organized resistance to Hitler, and Hitler gave up on trying to invade it. I mean, it was a national day of prayer that called him to that. The fifth national day of prayer was on September 3rd. And it, it says the next day at Palmero in the Mediterranean, the entire Italian fleet was sunk. At a day of prayer, and the next day the enemy, and the Italian uh, Axis power was defeated. Their whole fleet was sunk. And so that was the fifth. The sixth national day of prayer was on September 3rd. 1943, that very night, Italy surrendered to the Allies and the dictator Mussolini was murdered. It was the anniversary of the start of the war for them, for, and they called a National Day of Prayer. And then the seventh and the last National Day of Prayer was during the spring of 1944, prior to D-Day. And General Eisenhower reported later, he says, if there was nothing else in my life to prove the existence of an almighty, merciful God, the events of the next 24 hours did it, the greatest break and a terrible outlay of weather occurred next day and allowed that invasion, great invasion, to proceed. If D-Day had not taken place, again, World War II could have looked a whole lot different. I, I just point this out. I just, when I read that, it was encouraged. Prayer makes a difference. And we may sit there and think, well, we're here in Chesapeake, Virginia. What can our prayers do for a place like Ukraine? <laughs> makes all the difference. Make all the difference. And so we're going to, going to have a, a time of, of prayer uh, for Ukraine. I'm going to kind of close our time that we're videoing. After that, we're going to enter into a time of, of prayer. But I just want to encourage us to, this is the time to call to God. We may sit there and think that battle is way over there. No, this is a, it is a spiritual battle. And we need to see hearts and lives changed, transformed. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I, I thank you, Lord, and I just praise you for your great love and your great mercy. Thank you that you laid out in Psalm 2 that you're in control and you've already got the answer. You sent your precious son, Jesus Christ, and he is the anointed one. He is the Messiah and he is victorious. So Lord, we call upon you to work and, and move, Lord, in our lives. But more importantly, right now, we ask that you work and move in the people of Ukraine. Lord, that you would protect them Lord, they're facing evil. They're standing up and resisting. And Lord, we just pray that you protect innocent life. Lord, we pray that they would call out to you in prayer. And I've seen reports of that, that the Ukrainian people are, are gathering and praying. And so Lord, we join with them to pray that Lord, your will be done. And that Lord, again, you protect them. And Lord, grant them victory. I pray, Father, that you would uh, speak to those that are doing the invasion or those that are on the ground the, the, the troops that Lord I think they're wondering what they have gotten themselves into I pray Father that they would repent that Lord you would bring conviction upon them that Lord they would not commit atrocities or evil Lord they wouldn't even fire their guns because of the conviction of the Holy Spirit I pray Father you bring uh, just your conviction on uh, the president of Russia, uh, Putin, Lord, that he would repent of this evil. Lord, it just sounds like he's just going deeper and deeper into insanity and the things that he's saying and wanting to do. And Lord, we pray right now that you would intervene in his heart and his life, cause him to come to his senses and call off this invasion. Lord, just do this in a way that you receive all the glory. Pray for the people in Russia, Lord, who are opposed to this. Pray, Father, that you would sustain them. That, Lord, you would give them boldness and courage to speak up and say, this, this does not represent what we want. Lord, for those that are fleeing, people in Ukraine who are trying to get out of harm's way and going to neighboring countries, Lord, there's a humanitarian crisis that's un underway. They need food. They need shelter. They need water. They need all the basic necessities of life. And pray, Father, that they would receive those. Lord, I heard reports that there's a, a Baptist seminary in 
uh, I think it's Leave, it's the western part of Ukraine. They, they're housing refugees, they're helping, and Lord, it's an opportunity for the gospel to go forward. So, Father, I pray uh, for the situation there and just strengthen our hearts to know, Lord, how to pray. Lord, we also pray for those in our own congregation, Lord, that just need a, a touch from you. And, Lord, let's pray that the, the Earl uh, Provot family, Lord, he passed away. And, uh, Lord, he knew you and he's in your presence and we can rejoice in this. But, Lord, be with his family and just sustain them, Lord. I pray that they would sense your comfort and your peace. Lord, be with others in our congregation, Lord, that need just your healing touch. Lord, your comfort also. For Lord, you are the one who knows how to comfort us in our time of need. So, Father, we give you praise. Lord, we give you glory. We pray all this in Jesus' precious name. In God's people say. Amen. 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 Well, again, appreciate you guys being here this morning. Appreciate those that are tuning in on uh, Facebook Live and YouTube Live. Let's say our vision verse will kind of conclude this time, and then we'll have a, another time of prayer. Let's say this. Declare his glory among the nations. We get to do this. God bless you. Thank you.